This video series is dedicated to my good mate Dennis Patel, a man whose knowledge of the desert was unmatched. Rest in peace my friend. Yeah, awesome to meet people here who had their first time in the desert, five cars. Um, hello to you guys um, who used my videos to prepare for the desert and uh, yeah work well for them awesome to see that uh, they get used and yeah help people to come out here so that's i guess the whole purpose of the videos really to uh, allow people to come out here do it safely and um, share the experience from someone who just does it a lot So we shall see whether you live. Yeah, I guess. we will. <laughs> <laughs> or live, whether you dig many holes. <laughs> I've passed these grave sites several times. Each visit piqued my curiosity about the story behind it. This time I delved into the history. Yaroslav, along with his wife Jindra, came to Ödnadeda in 1960, seeking a hot, dry climate to alleviate his sinus troubles. What started as a health move turned into a business opportunity when Jaroslav took over the general store with just a modest deposit. Known as Peck, he quickly became a central figure in Ödnadeda, eventually owning nearly every business and property in the area, except the Transcontinental Hotel. Peck's influence was far-reaching. He provided for everyone, from the local station owners, Aboriginal community to all rig workers and stockmen. His gravesite here is a quiet reminder of a man who, in his own way, shaped a small part of the Australian outback. Camels and dromedaries are an introduced pest and are not good for the desert ecosystem. However, it's still amazing to see him in the Australian desert. On a side note, it is quite likely that Australia now has the largest wild Arabian camel population in the world. Crazy, eh? After several years of issues, Dave and Kylie finally ditched their Defender Puma last year. So this was the first desert trip in the new Y62 Patrol and Dave played a bit around to figure out the best settings for desert dune driving. I gotta admit, if I was in the market for a new car, the Y62 would be high on my list. It's hard to beat the sound of the V8, don't you think? corrugation on the rig road as you can see here are pretty bad yeah. oh, look at that not a single tire track that is cool I haven't seen that On this trip I'm testing the Zoleo and Garmin InReach Mini 2 satellite messengers to give you my honest opinion about the pros and cons and decide for myself which one to keep. So there is actually an issue here with um, the Zoleo where it can't send a location when it doesn't have one. I'm somewhere here in the middle of the Simpson Desert and I can't send my location. 
that is actually pretty annoying. I don't think I have the same issue here. So here, if I send a message, for example, my location is automatically sent. So yeah, that, that is really a bummer. I also noticed that uh, with the weather, for example, birds will okay, but I can't, um, it doesn't automatically actually choose the closest location to where you are. I had to manually specify birds will on the map um, to show that, which was a bit annoying, which I don't think again is an issue here. Let's see, basic, get forecast. That was, it says last updated Thursday, I like that. And where it was, 243 kilometers away, so that's great. And let's see what happens now. So, and then, yeah, it gives me a forecast from wherever I am here, so which is pretty good. So uh, that is definitely a drawback of the Zuleo if you do more remote stuff. Oh, that is pristine here. There's no track, no nothing anymore. Oh, the track is there, but no tire prints. It's always nice if you crest dunes like that. Venturing into the Simpson Desert, we often find ourselves drawn to its old oil drilling sites. These sites, long since abandoned, stand stark and minimalistic against the desert backdrop. Far from the industrial graveyards one might imagine, these locations are surprisingly uncluttered, often marked only by a weathered plaque or an old pipe protruding from the sand. Reward. Blasting caps. Yep, yeah, that's what they look like. You finding bloody rocks again, Dave? No, something cooler. Blasting caps, I think. After a bit more driving, it was time to look around for a campsite, and we found a nice open spot which would do for the night. Welcome to Bush ER. Yeah. Sorry. Good old splinter kit. Definitely needs an ambo. Exploring the surroundings of our camp is always a highlight when we are out in the vastness of the desert. An early morning walk undertaken just as the first light of dawn breaks the horizon is a perfect way to appreciate the unique beauty of this landscape. I said that before, if you want to go wandering here, definitely have navigation device with you. And ideally a PLB or oh, that's why I really like Garmin or Zaleo, to be honest, because they're a little bit lighter 
and the Garmin obviously also tracks your whereabouts but from where our cars are you think it's all a flat plain but once you walk into it you see there is tons of gullies smaller dunes and it's uh, very very easy to lose sight of your car completely Remnants of the dinners they've had here. Yeah. And I uh, look at all the bones. Some bones hanging up in the sticks. Oh yes. And see yeah, that nest and all these little seeds. I wonder what they do with them. Uh, the ants coming. They uh, the chips them that really kind of I don't know, I'm no geologist, it looks like a bit like glass, it crystallizes. Look at that. Very fine sheets. A beautiful morning a nice fresh night not too cold not too warm just perfect not too much dew beautiful sunset beautiful sunrise I just love it when you see the slither of uh, orange violet start appear on the horizon and you actually have a big view it's just beautiful and uh, we are again following some old and very faint tracks to an old oil drilling site. Many times the track is completely lost, especially once it goes over dunes. I'm not actually stuck here, but the faint track I'm on has some big washouts straight ahead, so I have to find a way around it. This is another interesting dune crossing where you have a sharp S-bend at the bottom of the dune which means you can't really take a good run up and really need 100% good throttle control and exactly the right momentum to get up here. It is also the easiest for the first car because the sand is not yet churned up. Okay, I won't say anything. Thanks me with an extract call. Yeah, come right back, mate, and just ease into, into it with a run up. Am I missing something? Kind of. 
I'm sure you'll see it all on film later, Drop. I wouldn't miss it. Straight being a dick. I think, Kaida, you better drive. Just try to keep it in that whatever your your rev band is, you know, that you have probably four or five hundred to go. Otherwise stay off my track, just make a new track there. Um, it's probably a bit softer now as well as you ducked some holes there. Definitely softer. While the dune might not appear steep or challenging at first glance, it's particularly tough for the last car in the convoy, as the sand becomes looser and more treacherous with each vehicle that attempts a climb. Navigating this terrain requires skill and patience, especially after others have churned up the path. We found ourselves a good camp spot close to one of the old oil drilling sites. Because it was still fairly early, we spent some time in the shade and just relaxed line. and enjoyed some good I'm chats. Him off online for, you know, mega dollars. Mm -hmm. And he could get away with it because he <laughs> bit of refilling. Yep. Emptying the load. Dave and Kylie were the only ones with petrol, so they had to carry all their petrol supply for the trip. Later in the afternoon, it was time for another walk to explore our surrounds. Nice! Yeah, dried paddy melons, never seen oh, it's them. Paddy melons? Yeah. <laughs> I've never Check seen it. Them. It looked like an emu egg or they something. Did. Eagle Eye Stephen spotted what appeared to be an old chisel. That was quite an amazing find. Obviously, we left it in its place. See to Summit, it's one of their water cell X's. I purchased it oh, a few months ago and thought I'd try that as a shower. Um, supposedly it's also a water storage container, but what I read is that it tastes um, quite bad, quite plasticky. I actually haven't tried it because I didn't buy it for it, but it comes with a, a shower attachment, a nozzle attachment, and I just had a bush shower. It wasn't really full, it probably I would say had around 8 liters in, and I would say I can definitely have one more shower out of it. Let me just show you. You just turn that here. And that was enough to wet myself, soap up and clean up all the soap. So I like that and I'm going to keep that in the car. Because to be honest, if not needed, I can just uh, let the water out and it will take up no room. And it also provides a bit of emergency water, even if it tastes... Actually, let me do a taste. See? Well, a, t a very faint plasticky taste. But I'm happy to drink, especially in an emergency. So these kind of serves uh, two purposes. Emergency water supply container which I can have in the car because it seems to be pretty robust, not easily going to be pierced. But also for the shower, I can already say that works very well. So I like it. I think you also get them in 20 liter or 15. I think 10 liter is probably ideal to hang it up somewhere. That is another thing. 
quite neatly done. So that's all very sturdy. You can unclip that, hang it around the tree and then put it down. So yeah, I really like it. Yeah, just a little product testing update. I'm still using these Flextail mini pump and uh, yeah, does a good job. Still have a bit of steak. Can't be bothered cooking. I thought about yeah properly cooking but can't be bothered so i never tried that delicious chunks of chorizo smoked bacon champion champions red kidney beans with notes of garlic and herbs i think i'm gonna have that chuck the steak in and i have a little bit of rice quinoa left from yesterday so just having a quick one Just had a taste, it's beautiful. I like it. Yeah guys, this is the end of part two of this epic Simpson Desert trip. Make sure you share, like, subscribe and stay tuned for episode number three where we continue this awesome adventure. So guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please keep in mind, this is a self-funded channel. So I would greatly appreciate if you could help me out by sharing, liking and subscribing. And if you can, please consider head over to Patreon or buy me a coffee. And with the equivalent of a cup of coffee or two per month, you can really help me making these videos. Thanks a lot for watching and see you along the tracks. <music>